please. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Math Chat, the call-in show that answers all your questions here live from Forbes College at Princeton University. I'm Professor Frank Morgan of Princeton University and Williams College, and as my special guest here tonight, I have Hi. Professor John Conway, the John Conway, also of Princeton University, who's going to have some questions and comments and stories in, a, in just a few moments, we'll be taking your calls. Also, I look out into our staff audience tonight. I see Jade Vinson directing. I see Ray Marquette, who will be taking calls here. And you'll be, you can start calling in whenever you like. If you want to get a cue, the number will be appearing on the screen right there. Adrian Banner, our, our host, our, our guest host tonight. Ralph Thomas is on control panel. We have some experts here from Media Services. That's David Hopkins and Steve Richard. On our cameraman tonight is Derek Smith. So we're going to have a great show. And so, Professor Conway, it's great to have you here. Well, I think it's great to be here. I'm a bit scared, though. On Math Chat, here we are live. Yeah, we are. And I understand I, you. Just about alive, yeah. <laughs> I understand you have a question, just a little challenge question, to start off the audience thinking tonight. We'll be giving prizes to the best answers. Yeah. Do you want me to say it now? You go right ahead. OK. So uh, here's the big city I used to go to work in every day. And I mm -hmm. used to arrive at the rail station here. And the place where I worked was down here, which was three blocks east, you see, three and blocks two blocks east. south. So I used to vary the path I, I went along here. Sometimes I'd go all the way east and then all the way south. Sometimes I'd go down south at first and then east and so on. But never and backwards. Never you backwards. You don't like wasting I, I wasted no time. I always just walked five blocks. So how many different ways could I do that? That's the question. How many different paths could I get to work? Oh, yeah. So how long, long could you go before you had to start repeating? That's how much right. variety could you have in your schedule? Could you go? Just a couple of days, or a couple of weeks, or all yeah. year. Well, I used to work five days a week, so how long did it take me? So yeah, th there's a good question. So folks, you're welcome to call in if you got an answer to that. We'll be taking calls here in the show. So there's one question we've got out. How about another question of a different sort? You have another one? I have one. Well, okay, you have yours. I'll first. take a turn. Okay, here's my question, folks. This is often attributed to the physicist Richard Feynman. Take a sprinkler. The old-fashioned variety, you know, with an S-shaped top, so as the water spurts out, it turns counterclockwise. You've seen mm -hmm. those things. Question is, suppose you take that sprinkler, put it upside down under water, and suck the water into it. Now which way will it turn? Very good question. So there's, there's question number two. There's question number two, folks. And maybe we'll have some other questions here, here too, tonight as well before we, before we take our, our calls. I also have some news announcements. And I'd particularly like to hear if there are any students watching from the local Princeton schools. We'd like to know that you're watching out there. You don't even need a question or a comment. You can just call in at Math Chat. We'd like to see which schools are out there watching. Well, you know, two of my boys go to local Princeton schools, Alex and Oliver, my two boys, I should have said. And so we'll maybe see, some of their friends are watching. Maybe some of their friends are watching. Maybe some of those schools will get a chance to compete in this little contest we have going. 
And we also, you know, we have, we've been doing some of these wacky wordies, so-called. Yeah. May we do one more of these here tonight? Well, just one. I think one. that's all right. <laughs> all right. So here's, here's one. Here's one. Maybe you can see the, this, folks. It looks like it just says, it, it. Only the first it is, in, is a different shape than that second it. That second it is kind of small, kind of hard to even see there. But that first it is a bigger it there, I guess. So what might that one mean? So there's a question we have for tonight. There are already people in the audience with their hands up. We were going to give the, lot, the audience, the TV audience, a chance first if they want to take the chance to call in. And I want to say one of the reasons we have Professor Conway on the show tonight is that this is declared Conway Week here at the math department, at least for our teaching mm -hmm. seminar purposes. We're going to be visiting your calculus class on Wednesday right. at 9 a.m. And anyone in the viewing audience who would like to join in is welcome to come. That'll be 9 a.m. Fine 214, the Math Tower, room 214. If you want to sit in on this calculus class, this is kind of an advanced calculus class, right? Honors. Yeah. Honors. Quite interesting. We'll move. It's quite a show to see. And then anyone who does that and would like to come to lunch here at Forbes College afterwards, if you call me, I can get you a free guest pass. Or if you're a faithful watcher, just show up. Lunch here with John Conway <gasps> at noon on Wednesday. And then we're going to actually videotape your class and talk about you. You aren't allowed to come. No, I don't want to come. Thursday afternoon at 2.30 in Find 314. So there are some events officially under the, under the sponsorship of my teaching seminar that will be coming up this week with Professor Conway. And I should also announce, perhaps, that next week on the program, we're going to have Professor Alexei Tuslin of Russia. He's at Moscow State University. We'll be visiting the United States briefly. We'll be here on the show talking about math, what it's like living in the Soviet, what it's like living in the former Soviet Union in Russia today, what it's like doing math in Russia. So that'll be an interesting story coming up next week on our show. And if any of you would like to be on the staff of Math Chat, you can think about doing that by coming to our show or calling me at 84196 or sending me email at fmorgan at princeton.edu. Well, we haven't gotten too far on the city yet. No, should we start thinking about point. this a little? Maybe we well, should you get know, people warmed up here. I think we should have some fun with here. my bits of string. Oh, OK. You've got okay. some bits of string here. I've got yeah. some bits of string. Let's see some but of these bits of string. But I want you to move that table out of the way. So maybe we can have some volunteers from the audience here. Mark, would you volunteer here? And maybe, maybe Rick. Would you volunteer to come up and move this table off to the side a little bit? We're going to have a very unusual, this doesn't often happen, just to the side there. OK, I think that's fine. And thank you very much, gentlemen. OK, well, no, like but I, well, I want the dancers. There. Hi. Want to get some dancers? OK, so we're going to have some dancers in a minute, but maybe first but we'll take a call. call. We've got a call coming in. Yeah, go ahead. You're live on Matt Chat. Hi, I have a solution to the city problem. You have a solution to the which problem? The city problem. To the, the city, city problem. problem. Oh, excellent. Maybe we could get that chart back here. Okay. I want to show that chart here. So here we've got a caller who says he's got up, an answer. There we go. And your name is? Dennis Clark. Dennis Clark, was that right? Yes. So welcome. Yes. So here, you want to hold that a second. Okay. Dennis Clark, I want to get your name down here. And here, what you reason is the answer. How many different ways are there to walk from the railroad station to work? OK, so there are 10 ways. And 10, 10 ways. ways, right first time. And there are two ways to arrive at it. The first way is counting it, because it's really small. Um, the more interesting way is to figure that you have to go east three times and south twice in order to arrive at where you work. Right. OK. And you have to go five steps total. Right. So the number of ways you can walk to work is equivalent to the number of ways you can choose two times to go east from your five Choices. All right, so oh, if you're five clever. blocks, you have to label two of them as east, and you wonder how many ways there are of choosing two of the five steps in your journey. Yeah. And why is that 10? Um, well, you use the formula for combinations, which is, which in this case is just be 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial, which is 10. That's I pretty see. fantastic. 5 times 4 divided by 2. So I guess you could think about. One step east can be any of the five, so that's five. The second step east could be any of the remaining four, so that's 
20, but now you may have them out of order. So you double count and you have to divide by that 2 you were talking about and get it down to 10, huh? Yes. So that's why it's the 5 times 4 divided by the 2. Hey, that's pretty well, good, I didn't Dennis. expect anybody I to get his first time round. That was too <laughs> fast. We may be going to have to put out a harder question there, but it looks like you're going to be winning a prize, Dennis, and we'll send you either Flatland or a Forbes T-shirt, whichever you'd like. Um, I think I have a copy of Flatland already. So, so maybe you'd like one of these T-shirts, huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and if you want to give your name, once you, they'll take you off the air, and then you can give our receptionist your your address so we can send that to you okay unless you want it in, uh, no, that's fine okay okay so great thanks a lot for calling Dennis okay yeah. bye 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 well that okay. was pretty fast. that's pretty that's fast, fast huh? yeah can you make this problem uh, harder somehow uh, no but I think we'll follow up from what Dennis said because I mean he he went there sort of straight away but I filled in ones you see, if, if I worked at this place, there'd only be one way to go there in the shortest possible time. If I worked anywhere along either of these east Oh, yeah, there'd just be one way, because you just, just have one, to yeah. keep going east or keep but going But there are south. two There's ways no of going here, because I could go either way around the block. OK. Oh, I see. So you get one from this one, yeah. and you get one from but that one. But now, you one. know, if I wanted to go here, there's one way. I mean, just look at my last step. There's one way in which the last step is downwards and one way in which it's across. And, uh, sorry, two ways in which it's across, because I could combine that. So when you look at it, you get... I see, so we get this three because there are two ways coming through this point and, and one, one way coming through that point. So you just add those, the one and yeah. the two, and get the three. And so when you look at it, it's a triangle that's very famous to mathematicians. Three and three make six ways Oh, no, wait, maybe, now let's not say this. May, I'd like to see a caller come in with the name of this triangle, preferably from my Math 103 class. <laughs> but, but it could be any caller could come in, or maybe anybody. Does anyone out there watching from Math 103 or some other math class? Maybe you'll recognize. But you know, it's a little tricky because it didn't look like a triangle. Yeah. It didn't look like a triangle. You had to change till it looked like a square there. Yeah. But it's still this famous triangle. Oh, I see some hands up there. See some hands up there. But now, can we see what that adds up to? Four and six make ten. Okay. So there you got the ten. There mm -hmm. you got the ten. And it came from some triangle there, which we're going to be educated about. Actually, may, let's keep that up, because I mm -hmm. think there's some people here in the audience who have things to say. Michael, first of all, yes? What did you want to say about that? I'm not sure of the name of the triangle, but I'm pretty sure it starts with a P. Oh, so Michael says he's not sure of the name, but he thinks it starts with a P. And I think he might be right about that. I think that. he might just He'd be, be right. right about that. He's well on his way to winning. Michael, you know, appeared on the show last week. And he's well on his way to winning a video copy of the tape of the show. That isn't quite enough yet. The letter P isn't quite enough yet. But you're, you're well along your way there. So that's good, Michael. So now I see some other hands up right back here. Both Sepielli's hand I see up and Michael's hand I see up. And who do you, whom do you think we should give first crack at this here? Well, is there anyone out there in the wide world? No, not yet. No, no one okay. out in the wide world yet. So, so maybe, now Michael was at, at Penrose's talk, you know, so maybe we should take him first. <laughs> that's quite, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a quite a, that was an, a difficult talk, wasn't it? We were it just at a, a talk by, talk. Penrose maybe is one of the most famous mathematicians in the world. Is that fair? I would say so, yes. And because he's developing new math to understand the frontiers of physics, quantum mechanics, gravity, how to put that all together with these so-called mathematical twisters. Mm. Yeah? All right, so, so Michael, maybe, maybe you can tell us what that talk was about first, and then we'll hear the name of this triangle. How would you, what did you get out of that theory. twister theory, and what's that about? It's a big theory. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big theory, but what was in it? Any, can you name anything oh, that was in it? Space. Oh, very good, excellent, right? So yeah. complex geometry is in it. Okay, that was full fantastic. Marks. Okay, full marks. Full mark says the teacher here. So what's the name of this triangle? I believe it's Pascal's triangle. And Sepielli, do you agree with that? I agree. Pascal's triangle, I think that's it. I yeah, yeah. It may well so, here, so they have some no more points out here tonight. They're in the running for the audience prize tonight. Both Sepielli and Michael are in running for the audience prize. Of course, Michael over here is in running for his. He's going for a special prize that we're saving for him if he can accumulate that in time. So Pascal's triangle. And what is, well, how does this triangle come up otherwise, folks? Yeah, audience is el right here, live audience is eligible in this. You can use it for uh, genetics and things like that in, uh, in biology problems. Genetics? 
How yeah. does it come up in genetics? Well, basically when you're, um, uh, I had biology like last year, but you basically when you're combining like, uh, you know, two uh, you know, sets of alleles or whatever, and you, not really come up, it, it comes up somehow. It's it comes up in combinations, system. that's what it comes up in, yeah. Combi ways that you can combine genes, I guess, <laughs> yeah. to get yeah. descendants, yeah? You're keeping track. It's a lot like this, right? Yeah. You try to see how many different roots there are to being redheaded, there might only be one, or how many different roots there are to being brown haired, there might be six. And then you'd figure out that brown headedness is six times as likely as redheadedness. Well, so it's well, a different thing like counting the roots. Same idea, yeah? 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 Well, I want to get onto my string. Oh, your string? Oh, okay, really we'll come didn't. back to this, Pascal's triangle. Maybe some people will call in, especially from Math 103, about where Pascal's triangle comes up in calculus. Okay, now come on. I've got to get you all dancing. Well, oh, we want volunteers for dancing here. Okay, well, come on up, folks, if you're willing to volunteer to do a little not dancing here. That's great. Great. Uh, great. We want four I of them. I see Janine. No, Jen. Jen. Yes. Jen yeah. has come up, and Rick, that's good. Two more, Who else please. is willing? Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Marjorie Duck and Michael. I think. Marjorie okay. and Michael are up here. Okay. Uh, so we've got to train these people first, please. Will the two people nearest here raise their string? Okay, and you two lower it. And then everybody here just have to have a ter terribly quick applaud. Oh. That'll work havoc with the sound system, I'm sure. Well, now, here, let me tell you where it's zero now. I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm not going to tell anybody what it means, but we're at zero. Where are we? Zero. Yeah, good. Okay. And now, what we do here, if we want to add one, we twist them up, which means the person in that corner of the room, who won't always be you, but it is right now, goes over that person. You go under. So swap. Okay. And so where are we now? One. 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 Twist them up again. Where are we? Two. Twist them up again. Where are we? Three. three. Okay, we're at three. Now we've got to practice turn them around. So you all walk one place clockwise. Okay. And then you display. The two people at the back, no. Two people at the front go down. So this is negative one third. Oh, I got it wrong. Where's my pen? Right there. It's negative one third. Because whenever you do this, I don't know whether anybody can see that thing on the screen. I think they can. You turn it upside down and you negate it. So it's now minus a third. Okay. Twist them up. Where are we? We were at negative one third and we added one. Two thirds. Positive two thirds. Okay. This is Twist the craziest them up again. arithmetic I ever heard. What can this mean? Where are we? Five thirds. Good. Keep it as five thirds to twist them up again. Where are we? Eight thirds. Let's turn them around. Where are we? Three eighths. Negative, Negative three eighths. Okay, get back to zero, folks. Twist them up. Where are we? Five eighths. Yeah. Yeah, we were at negative three eighths, that's right. So what are we going to do now? You choose. You can only do the, these two things. We're at positive five eighths. <laughs> we'd get to 13 eighths. Yeah. And if we added another of them, you'd get to 21 eighths. I don't think we want to do that. I don't okay, think we so want to do that. I think we should rotate. Turn them around. And where are we? Minus eight fifths. Minus eight fifths. Okay, what do we want to do now then? Twist them up. Where are we? Um, three fifths. Positive three fifths. What are we going to do now then? Positive three fifths. We're now at negative five, thirds. negative five thirds. What are we going to do now? Hi, Oliver. I hope you're watching. <laughs> negative five thirds. Where weren't we? Yeah, yes. So where are we now? Negative two thirds. Oh, I like this. What are we going to do now? Let's twist them up again. Twist them up again. Except that we aren't. Yeah. Ooh. 
We must have made a terrible <laughs> mistake. Well, I'll tell you where we actually are. We're at positive 10 thirds. I wasn't watching this, <laughs> folks. So there's where we are. So let's cure it that. Oh, OK. Positive 10 thirds. Okay, Turn them around. around. Right. I don't know what mistake we made, folks. Now we're at negative 3 tenths. Negative right. 3 tenths. So Twist them up. Right. Where are we? You know, I'm going to keep a note in case I forget. Where's the chalk? <laughs> so we're at seven, seven tenths. Seven tenths so Positive seven tenths. Positive seven tenths. Yeah. Okay. So turn, turn them around. Right. So now negative, negative ten. ten seven. Good. Twist them up. Oh. And we're at Positive. Negative. Negative, negative three seven. Negative three yes. seven, right? So we got to twist them up again. Up again. Positive four seven. seven. Right, so now we should turn them around. Turn them around. Negative seven fourths. Uh, 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 <laughs> negative. Oh, maybe that's what happened. <laughs> negative seven fourths. Okay. So add one. Yes. Right. Negative three fourths. Negative three fourths. Oh. You know something. I don't know if this is. <laughs> We're not getting it right. <laughs> we should have had a rehearsal. I think what happened? Some of the error was in the first place. What was the error? You had a sign error, classical problem. Uh, you were at minus eight fifths and you added one. That brought you to minus oh. three. Oh. Oh. oh, it's really I was terrible. I should have pointed out that my colleague here said I was wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were probably right. You're the, the only one of us who was. Oh well, my. so this is a crazy kind of arithmetic. We didn't see it actually work out here, but we can no. imagine that it did. And how can we adequately thank our dancers here for this? Well, I don't know. We should give them a hearty round of applause anyway. <laughs> so is there really some relation? And I guess you can, they can yeah. sit down and yeah. rest them. So is there really, how can there be this, this, this crazy arithmetic that well, has to do really, with these knots somehow? It's a really wonderful thing. These are called tangles. If you have some bits of string like this with four ends coming nice out. Thing. And there's a fantastic, wonderful correspondence between tangles and fractions. Who would expect this? Who discovered this? Well, somebody who's too modest to name himself. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Conway. Yeah, I'm working on the modesty. I'd be perfect if I weren't so modest and I'm, uh -huh. I'm approaching <laughs> on that. Well, I think we, may, we have to settle a few of these other questions that yeah, weren't we done. We had, a, we had a, something from the back of the audience here. Someone had an answer to this it, it question. I think that was Kathy back there. Yes? Um, the long and short of it. The long and short of it. Yes, I think that's it. The long and the short <laughs> of it. Yes. Kathy. One of our famous audience members got the long and the short of it here tonight. So that was memorable. And we also still have this question out about the sprinkler. Oh, you have to uh, tell people the date, October the 28th. For this is very important, yes. I promised that tonight I would mention when you're appearing on this national TV program. This is about from Osleus Theorem, I think, uh, Yes, right? and it's not only me, but Andrew Wiles, who is the person who finally proved this famous theorem. And other people from Princeton. And lots of other people. And it's a program Who else is on the there? Discovery. Professor Katz? Lots of local Princeton. Professor Pinsonians. Sarnak? Yeah. Professor right. Shimura. Professor Shimura will be on that program. Yeah. And that'll be Tuesday, October 28th at 8 p.m. So we're going to continue to give you reminders about this during the month. At least the, and that's going to be on the Princeton area. It'll be on PBS across the country. Here in Princeton, it's PBS Channel 13. But there are other places across the country. That will be a good. Have you seen this show yet? I've seen the video tape of it. Yes. And it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So good show. You might want to see that show. That's coming up. End of the month. Now I want to get back to my sprinkler here, though. Okay. Huh? Get back so to what do you sprinkler. think about my sprinkler? Does anybody have any ideas? Yes, Michael. What do you think about this sprinkler? Which way is it going to turn underwater, upside down? Uh huh. So you say it would still turn counterclockwise because flipping it over changes it. And it's sucking the water, so that would make it counterclockwise again. 
So that would make it counterclockwise again. And that's the best answer so far, folks. It's not a perfect answer, it turns out. I don't know if anybody else has more to say about this. We're hoping to hear something more from Seppielli or Michael. They're neck and neck for the audience prize tonight. So we're hoping that they're going to have something more to say about that sprinkler. This is, a, this is this famous question that came up from Richard Feynman, the celebrated physicist. So we'll see if we have any more, any more comments about that. There was also a question I think I mentioned last week which had to do with this NPR puzzle. But maybe you have another question or comment for it. Or a story. Didn't you have a story? Well, what do you want the story to be about? Well, there were those two <laughs> stories. And one of them you told, and one of them you didn't tell. I think it's probably best if I tell the story I already told. OK, it's tell that story. story. So it, we have, and fortunately, this is, I think, just a one-minute story. OK. Well, I had this uh, teacher, famous Russian mathematician, Besikovich, um, and he was a wonderful teacher of mathematics. But there's one particular occasion when he told us he was going to prove a really wonderful, very important theorem. Founder of my field in some ways. And uh, he, he took two and a half lectures over it, which amounted to more or less the whole week. Uh, and he asked us to watch it very carefully. And then he said, we will have applications. And so we had some applications, and he chose a function. And lo and behold, the theorem didn't work. No, wait a minute. He proved this theorem, he proved went this through theorem. all of this, gave an example, told us how and the theorem was false. The theorem was just fine. It actually failed. Why was it wrong? You! That's what he said. That's the sort of thing he does, yeah. Why was it wrong? You? No, he did. No, wait, <laughs> now math theorems are supposed to always be right, yeah. right? There aren't supposed to be any exceptions to it. Well, he theorem. asked why, why it failed and so on. It turned out that the reason it was wrong was because the theorem he'd been proving was false. And he said, well, next time. But you time, can't prove something false. Yeah, well, he did. He said, <laughs> next time I will do, uh, prove the theorem I should have proved, he said. And this time, you will listen. <laughs> so he really did something wrong when he proved it. He pulled a fast one over the audience. Yeah, he did. But he did something very right as well, because we all listened. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's the point. So maybe if we knew, you know, I know some people, a lot of people who pay attention that way, they're always looking for mistakes, no matter how trivial. Yeah. And it's a way you can keep things interesting. Some people just look for grammatical mistakes on programs. Some people look for tiny arithmetic errors. It's more likely, though, that the mistake is some logical, global kind of mistake. They're the hardest to find, don't mm -hmm. you think? They're the hardest to find, yeah. They're the hardest to find. Well, that was a good story. And mm -hmm. Besikovich, did you ever meet him? Well, yes, I met him. <laughs> I mean, talk to him personally yes, afterwards? Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. was he, he was there a pleasant There are many other fellow. stories about Besikovich I could tell you, too. He was a very pleasant fellow, a very interesting fellow, too. So the reason I know about him is because he was the one that really understood the structure of one-dimensional sets in the plane, and thus, in a certain sense, laid the basis for understanding fractals in higher dimensions. And fractals have become very important now. So that's a major, major topic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming near the end of the show today. Remember, if you'd like to be on the Math Chat staff, you can come to one of our shows or call me, 458, no, 258, 4196. Email me at fmorgan at princeton.edu. And until next week, I hope you'll be thinking up some good questions, saving, some, saving up your good questions. And finally, we have a final word of advice from Professor Conway about math. It's interesting because this word of advice applies equally well to math and to life. Well, does it? What's my word of advice? <laughs> <laughs> this is a little surprise, but he's never speechless. So we're putting him on the spot right here, folks. My ma word of advice from math and life. Well, I don't know. I think my, my advice is just stay interested. There's always something fantastically interesting to do. And I just go around and I look and I sort of, uh, you know, wonder what, why the moon looks like that tonight. I wonder why two plus two make four. And, but it know, takes an effort, right? It yeah. takes an effort. The well, interesting, interesting world is you were when you were four. But you've really got to be with that world. Yeah. You've got to pay attention to it. Yeah, it's In natural. But preferably, kids. stay being four years old all your life. Four years old forever. Yeah, I think that's the best advice. The Math Chat staff feels we feel that way. Most mathematicians, I think, feel that way. Most mm -hmm. students should feel that way. And so 
That's our gift to you tonight in the audience. Stay for, save up your questions, and call in to next week's edition of Math Chat. Okay. That was good. That was good. I like the music. <laughs> the other one, Pascal's Triangle, was a great success. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, except really well a bit of a pity. <laughs>